I'm T.C. Boyle, pleased to be back in Cheltenham again with my 23rd book, a novel called San Miguel. This is my second book in a row set on the California Channel Islands, not the English Channel Islands, but the California Channel Islands. I live in Santa Barbara, and these islands are visible off the coast. They comprise now part of the national parks of the U.S. The big one, just across from me, 26 miles across, is Santa Cruz. It's four times bigger than Manhattan. No one lives on it. It's a national park now. So I wrote, When the Killing's Done, came out last year, about the ecological restoration on these islands. A novel, full of sex and misery and horror, of course. But still, it's a, a contemporary story about uh, preserving the island fox. It's the size of a house cat. It was going extinct. The biologists had to figure out what to do. In the course uh, looking up that information and meeting with biologists and so on, I discovered an historical story about the farthest out of the island, San Miguel, and that is the subject of what I've done for the new book. The Santa Cruz Island Foundation is run by Marla Daly. She's become a good friend. She helped me with the research for When the Killing's Done and suggested some texts which enabled me to find out about life on the islands. So, San Miguel becomes an historical novel set in two periods, 1888, 1930 through 1942. And it deals with um, the lives of three women, entirely from their point of view. Who lived there? Uh, Marantha Waters in 1888 left a diary behind, very fragmentary. Uh, she only lived on the island for six months. I tell her story. In the second part, I tell the story of her adopted daughter, Edith, who had to live out there, uh, taken out of school at the age of 15 to live on this remote island. And incidentally, no one else lives there, just this family. And then the scene shifts to the 1930s when another family came with the same idea of getting away from the world, being king and queen of their own island, raising sheep. It's just ran wild. There are no predators there, no fences necessary, and making a living from the wool during the Great Depression. Well, the American dream is pretty much the same as the British dream. That is, to live in a democracy and experience class mobility. I think a lot of recent immigrants uh, feel that uh, the American dream is simply to acquire things. I mean, this is a, a sort of a counter of, of how well you're doing. And I think um, uh, that is a mistake for me. Um, yes, I mean... Whatever I need, I have. Uh, my, my wife acquires it for me, of course, while I sit in my study writing books. Um, it's a dream of freedom to do exactly as I please. You know, I am a patriot because I grew up in a country in which no one ever said no to me. And um, I'm the first of my family to go to college. I have a PhD. I'm uh, writing books uh, as I like, doing exactly as I like. Um, to me, this is more the American dream. You're referring, though, I think, too, to this kind of ut utopian ideal. Uh, you know, because America moved from east to west and uh, successively pioneers opened up new towns and so on. Um, this is a strong streak in our society. Everyone would like to have his own island and make his own laws and live apart. I've been writing about this through book after book. Uh, a Drop City, for instance, in 2003, which is set in the distant period of the 1960s about the Back to the Earth movement, hippies. Um, can we get off of this capitalist wheel? Uh, can we live apart from all of that? Well, the answer is no, <laughs> we can't. There are seven billion of us. We just have to, have to hang on until we're all dead. As we know, um, in an independent bookstore, you get to know people and people know you. Um, you can have suggestions. You can browse and see what you've been meaning to read but no longer have. Remember the uh, historical phenomenon of the video shop? I loved the video shop. I knew everyone there. I could tell jokes with them. It was part of the village. I could go in there and see movies I'd forgotten about or the guy could tell me, the proprietor could tell me. Well, that's gone now. Yes, you can look on the internet for streaming videos and see a robot matching what you might like with what you've seen before. It's not the same as being in a real place with real people and touching the thing. And it's an actual thing. That's not so bad.